unillumination, inactivity, negligence, and mere delusion, these arise, O joy of the Guru's Arjun, when dullness increases. Sri Krishna addresses Arjun as Guru Ananda, meaning one who gives joy to the Gurus. At the root, all of these people are of the Guru lineage. One who gives them joy is Guru Ananda. We call Sri Krishna Yashoda Ananda, one who gives joy to Yashoda or Nanda Ananda, one who gives joy to Nanda. One who gives joy to Nanda is Nanda Ananda, Nanda Yatisa Nandana. Arjun is Guru Ananda because he gives joy to the Gurus. Sri Krishna says that when the mode of tamas, dullness, increases, what happens first is that there is unillumination. There is darkness in the antakaran, the inner being, and the senses. There is also inactivity where one performs no activities and is just lying there like a lazy person. The next thing that happens is that negligence comes and delusion also arises. These four things come, unillumination, inactivity, negligence, and delusion. These are the characteristics that come when the mode of tamas, dullness increases. The first characteristic is aprakashaha, unillumination. Shankarajaji calls this a lack of discrimination. Avivekaha, there is no discrimination and a lack of discrimination. One loses this discrimination to decide what is right and what is wrong and loses the discrimination to decide what is good action and what is bad action. This goes away. Ramanujaraji defines Aprakasha as the absence of wisdom. If there is no wisdom, then no light will come because the fire of wisdom gives light. What was in the mode of Sattva goodness? Light increases. Sarvatvara Shudehes mean Prakasha Upachayate. When the light of wisdom streams forth in all the gates of the body, this is the quality of the mode of Sattva goodness. The mode of Tamas Donas is completely the opposite to this as there is Aprakasha, an illumination. There is a reason for this. A person of the mode of Sattva goodness or a devotee of the mode of Sattva goodness has performed penances of the mode of Sattva goodness on the right path over and over again and has cleaned the glass around the lantern. He has made very clean and because it has been made clean, the light of the soul within beautifully comes out. Whereas in the mode of Dhamma Stonus, one has not even made efforts to make the Antakara inner being clean. A lot of mesh has come into the glass of the lantern, and while the mesh has come, the lamp is still lit inside because the fact that one is living is proof of the fact that the individual soul inside and the Supreme Soul is inside. And I am lodged in the hearts of all, from me are memory and knowledge as well as their loss. The Supreme Soul is there, but there is so much mesh in the glass of the Antakara inner being, that there is aprakashaha, unillumination. That is, that light does not come out and it cannot be seen outside. Not only does he himself not experience it, nor does anybody around him experience it. This is aprakashaha, unillumination. Mother Susan Saraswati Ji said that if there are reasons for one to attain grand wisdom, for example, through discourses, and yet one is still not able to attain grand wisdom, then this is a characteristic of a person of the mode of Dhamma stoneness. When the mode of Dhamma stoneness increases, then one can get discourses and the doors of the grand wisdom are open, yet the person does not go there. Ram Nam ki loop lagi hai, fir bhi wo cha nahi raha. The musical instrument of the name of Sri Ram is playing, yet he is not going there. This is a characteristic of the mode of Dhamma stoneness. This happens. Good activities are taking place, and one is getting grand wisdom, yet he says that, let it go, we are sitting here, we know everything. This is the mode of Dhamma stoneness. There is dark austerity, and yet one does not go there. This is the characteristic of the person of the mode of Dhamma stoneness. Nilkant Chi says that if there are people such as gurus giving them teachings, and yet the light in the form of activities of the mode of sattva goodness does not increase, then this is a characteristic of the mode of Dhamma stoneness. If the river Gama is flowing, and despite this, one does not take a dip in her, then this is the mode of Dhamma stoneness. If you place sweets and feces in front of a crow, then the crow would not go to the sweets, the crow would go to the feces first. This is the mode of Dhamma stoneness. We all know that sweets are regarded as nice, and are made of flour, ghee, and nice tasting ingredients, and that feces are disgusting, yet such a person just goes to the feces. He does not find it comfortable, this is the mode of Dhamma stoneness. There was a big period of moral studies taking place at a school and it, said, it was said that whoever wishes to become religious needs some courage. They need the courage to be alone. 
this is necessary. They said that you have gone on a school picnic in a group of 30 of you. The whole day you have done a lot of walking, running and jumping and you've become tired. You've eaten and your stomachs are full. At 9.30pm or 10pm you begin to get sleepy. 29 out of 30 people will go to sleep whereas one student is such that he has a rule that he prays every evening and he remembers the Supreme Soul. He gets very sleepy and he gets very tired yet no matter if 29 people around me are sleeping this person is sitting there pray praying to the Supreme Soul. This is the person of the mode of subtle goodness. He has the courage of being alone. A person of the mode of Thomas Donus also has the courage of being alone, but what he does is different. He will have gone from a dharmic discourse to a holy place of pilgrimage in a group of 30 and everybody is tired at the end of the day, having walked, eaten good food and become tired after eating. After this there is a, every day a rule in the group that they sing a few budgets say a few prayers and go to sleep. 29 out of these 30 people sit to sing bhajans and one brave in inverted commas person is such that he says that he's going to sleep and that others can do what they want. This is the mode of tamas, stoneness. When one person leaves 29 sleeping people and stays awake then this person is the mode of sattva goodness whereas when one person leaves 29 awake people and yet goes to sleep that awake people that goes to sleep, this person is of the mode of double stoneness. This is the difference between the two. This is the mode of double stoneness. The circumstances are there, yet this person does not take the opportunity. Therefore, his characteristic is aprakashaha, an illumination. Why was light there? It was because of the mode of sattva goodness. But this person has overpowered his mode of sattva goodness, and therefore the mode of double stoneness has become awakened. Therefore, light was overpowered and darkness came. There is a uh, dimmer in the lamp shades of houses and in chandeliers. If you dim it, then it would automatically give darkness, and you do not have you, you do not have to call it darkness. The fact that it makes light dim is proof enough that darkness has come. The person should have made efforts for the mode of sattva goodness and should have opened the light so that light could come out, but he did not, and yet therefore darkness and the mode of double stoneness came. The second quality that comes from the mode of double stoneness when it increases is inactivity. Inactivity means indifference to performing actions. Inactivity means laziness. Nirkutji says once again, just like he said for Abhakra Shaka and illumination, that the reasons for attaining light and for attaining Gnad wisdom are there, and the Guru is in front of one, yet despite this, he does not take Gnad wisdom. In the same way, Nirkut says for inactivity that the reasons for performing activity are there and yet one is not performing activities. This is the mode of Dhamma stoneness. Look, can you now understand that the three differences in the activity? A person of the mode of sattva goodness performs responsive activities according to the circumstances without a feeling of selfishness, without a feeling of desire and without attachment to the fruits. This is a person of the mode of sattva goodness. A person in the mode of righteous passion only performs activities if he gets the fruits, otherwise he does not perform them. A person in the mode of tamas does not perform activities even if there is a necessity to perform activities and the circumstances to perform activities are there. The king of Japan decided that he wanted to find the laziest of all lazy people and that he would give them a award. How could he decide who was lazy? He said that we will do an examination invite all the lazy people here. Because they were going to get an award from the king, all the lazy people came there. They thought that the king is going to give us an award. The king said that he would decide what they should do and that they should do what they feel like doing and that the king would decide who is laziest. Everybody was given accommodation in huts made out of grass. Everybody was told to eat, drink and be merry. They did this. All day they, they ate, drank and were merry. When lunchtime came, then they were sleeping. At that time, the huts made up of grass were set to fire. When the huts of grass were set on fire, then it's natural that each and every person has a fear of death, and therefore they got up and ran. One person was such that he remained lying there. People told him that a fire had been set, and that he said that it does not matter I'm lying here, who would get up? Someone will come and put out the fire. If someone has set the fire, then someone will put up the fire. This person was just lying there and would not go anywhere. He was lazy. In the same way, a fire has been set in the hut in the form of life, and we're just lying there. Saints, knowledgeable people, wise people, and great souls tell us that, brother, a fire has been set in our lives. Get out there, 
Yet we're just sitting there and say that everything is fine and we do not have any worries. This is laziness. This is inactivity. If you look at activity in one way, it's the characteristic of the mode of Rajas passion, but the mode of Thomas Donus has increased, having overpowered the mode of Rajas passion, and that is why it has also overpowered the light of the mode of Sattva goodness, and also the activity of the mode of Rajas passion. That is why the mode of Thomas Donus leads to illumination and inactivity. The next characteristic that comes when the mode of Thomas Donus increases is negligence. Negligence means prakashena madhyati iti prabhadaha, neglecting one's duty. This is negligence. The next characteristic is delusion. Delusion is the opposite to gnad, wisdom. I re we spoken about delusion earlier and it means stupidity in a form of lack of discrimination. Delusion is doubt. When the mode of Thomas increases, then all of this happens. In the 18th verse of the 25th chapter of the 11th chapter of the Srimad Bhagavat, it says that Siddhachitam vilya when one's consciousness goes away, making one unable to concentrate their attention, one's mind is ruined, resulting in ignorance and depression, then understand that this is the predominance of the mode of Dhamma Stoners. When one's thoughts are perplexed and one's senses of wisdom have become powerless in understanding the sense objects, the senses of wisdom are unable to understand sense objects, and one's mind is unable to work properly, then understand that the mode of double stillness has increased. When the thoughts are perplexed that this happens, one does not understand what they should do and what they should not do. This is an increase in the mode of double stillness. When the mind in the form of resolve even dies, and the mind is unable to make decisions, then understand that the mode of double stillness has increased. If ignorance manifests, then the mode of Thomas has increased. Perhaps you asked the person two days ago what you should do, and they gave <coughs> very nice decisions and suggestions from their experiences. Then something happens which people call today's fashionable language to be depression. It is a fashion to be depressed. And despite the person having experiences, the person is unable to make a decision. Nothing is working in his mind, and Gnan wisdom has gone away from him, so that unknown ignorance has manifested. When this happens, then consider that the mode of Thomas Stoldus has increased. It is said in the Vanaparva of the Mahabharata that a person of the mode of Thomas Stoldus has a multiplicity of ignorance, is stupid, oversleeps, is without consciousness, is sinful, is angry, and is lazy. These are the characteristics of the mode of Thomas Stoldus. When all three of the modes of nature increase, then what does a person become like? Now we have to think about what which mode of nature do we have an abundance of? If we have light and gun, wisdom, then we have the mode of sattva, goodness. The mode of rajas, passion, has also been spoken about, and the mode of dhamma, stoness, has been spoken about. We can therefore realize where we are, and from realizing where we are, we can understand where we will go. The reason for this is that in the 14th verse, the Lord explains that at the time of death, which mode of nature is the most influential determines where the person moves to. The Lord explains this in both the 14th and 15th verses. At the time of death, whichever mode of nature is the most influential determines where a person goes. Let's go to the next verse.